Hello, this is Jeremy James, plant physiologist from the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center, here to present an Ag Minute. Both private and public land managers spend a lot of money each year trying to revegetate vast areas of rangeland in the Great Basin invaded by weeds. Unfortunately, failure rates of these revegetation projects are very high and weeds continue to persist in these systems. A major research focus of the experiment station is on developing new approaches for restoring rangelands invaded by weeds that may have a greater probability of success. This week we will be discussing one of these approaches that we have been developing called augmentative restoration. Traditional restoration programs for weed infested rangelands have tended to focus on killing the weed. Using the approach of augmentative restoration, however, we recognize that the weed is just a symptom of damaged ecological processes. Instead of continuously treating the symptoms of weed invasion, successful and sustainable restoration practices will need to address the underlying causes of weed invasion. With augmentative restoration, the specific ecological processes that are damaged are first identified, and then a restoration program that intends to repair these processes are developed. This week, we'll be exploring some of the details behind augmentative restoration and examine the merits of this approach in the field. This week, we are talking about how research at the experiment station is attempting to improve restoration procedures for weed-infested rangeland. Yesterday, we mentioned that traditional restoration programs have focused on killing the weed and have not given much consideration of how the ecology of the system may have been altered and allowed the weeds to invade. Basically, it seems most of the effort is generally spent fighting the symptoms rather than the causes of weed invasion. With augmentative restoration, we recognize that there are three general factors that can cause plant communities to change. These factors are disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance. These factors are present at natural levels in native plant communities. Weeds may invade, however, when the levels of disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance deviate from their natural levels, and the basic ecology of the system is disrupted. With augmentative restoration, the specific ecological processes that are damaged are first identified, and then a restoration program that attempts to repair these processes is developed. This week, we'll examine some circumstances that can cause disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance to deviate from their natural levels and then take a look at using augmentative restoration in the field to return these factors back to their natural levels. This week we've been exploring the idea that weeds may invade a system when the natural levels of disturbance, seed availability, or plant performance are altered. Instead of just spraying the weeds, a successful and sustainable restoration program will need to fix the ecological processes that are damaged and allow the natural levels of disturbance, seed availability, or plant performance to persist. This is precisely what we are trying to achieve with augmentative restoration. For example, if most of the area is occupied by weeds, a disturbance might be necessary to kill the existing vegetation and provide an area for a native seedling to establish. If there are not very many native plants at the site, there may not be a lot of native seed in the soil, so a restoration program also may need to add native seeds to the system, as well as creating a disturbance. Lastly, many environmental factors may favor the performance of invasive plants over native plants. As a result, in our restoration program, we may need to apply a treatment that favors the performance of native plants over invasive plants. This could range from early grazing to applying a selective herbicide, just something that will lower the growth of invasive plants, but not the native plants. Next time, we'll see how restoration programs can be improved when these programs identify and repair the specific ecological processes that have been altered. So far this week we have identified three ecological factors disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance that when altered from their natural levels may need to be repaired in a restoration program to allow successful revegetation of weed infested areas. In many restoration situations however not all these processes may be damaged or the ones that are damaged may be different in different areas. With augmentative restoration, we try to identify how the initial levels of disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance vary across a management unit and adjust our restoration techniques accordingly as we move across the landscape. For example, in weed-infested areas that have some remnant native plants, we may focus on applying treatments that impact the growth of weeds, but may not need to apply native seeds if the existing native plants have adequate seed production. By identifying what ecological factors need to be repaired and which ones do not, augmentative restoration can improve our restoration decisions as we move across the landscape. 
Along with the benefits of improved decision making, this has the additional economic and ecological advantages of avoiding unnecessary management inputs. Tomorrow we will describe how augmentative restoration was used in the restoration of a bunchgrass community dominated by weeds. This week we have been discussing a new restoration approach we are developing called augmentative restoration. With this approach we identify how current levels of disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance vary across the landscape. When these three factors deviate from their natural levels, it is often difficult to restore weed-infested plant community back to the native plant community. By identifying what ecological factors need to be repaired and which ones do not, augmentative restoration can hopefully improve our restoration decisions as we move across the landscape. We tested the effectiveness of augmentative restoration in a bunch grass community dominated by invasive forbs and annual grasses. We first made some simple observations about how disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance varied across our management unit. In some areas, disturbance was high due to vole activity. In other areas, seed production by native plants was fairly high, and in bottom lands with moist soils, native grasses tended to grow better than invasive forbs. These observations indicated that we would not need to address disturbance, seed availability, and plant performance in all areas of our management unit but that we would get the best results if we adjusted our treatments as we moved across the landscape. This, in fact, was the case. In this study that used the approach of augmentative restoration, we were able to improve our probability of selecting the best restoration treatment from 12% to 66%. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend.